Father Jim, you told me that you completed this about a year ago. What was the inspiration behind it? Why did you do this? Well, Mother Angelica had these beautiful stations of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And as I prayed them, there was just a sense of of connection with the cross. It's like a continuation of the cross. And then when I was here, I just had this scripture a meditation on Isaiah 118, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed clear to me that the sins of scarlet is the way of the cross, mm -hmm. made white as snow as the way of the Eucharist. Right. And the Eucharist be having the purifying wave of divine mercy. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a sense of, in ministry, of encountering people who think, if people knew all about me, they could never love me. Right. And it's not true. Mm -hmm. That's the whole message of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He forgives, he forgets, and the tran inner transformation. It's not just the redemption wrought by the blood of the Lamb, but the mm -hmm. application of that redemption through sanctification and salvation in the way of the Eucharist. That's beautiful. Well, let's take a look at the stations here. You've got this entryway here, so you have a sense that you're entering into kind of a little pilgrimage. Was that an idea too, kind of a pilgrimage? It is. And, and I wanted, I just felt inspired to write my own way of the cross. Mm -hmm. And probably San Alfonso's Le did a much better job than I. <laughs> but it was, the idea was that I studied the history of the way of the cross mm -hmm. and going black back to a poor Claire, blessed Eustochium. Mm -hmm. And poor Claire Nunn, and she had a very, very difficult past. And, and, but when she became a poor Claire, there was such a conversion and such a transformation that, that she became, uh, miracles happened, and she's a blessed now. And she was one of the initial founders of this. It can go all the way back to her, the Blessed Mother visiting the sites, but in the formal uh, establishment of 14 stations, mm -hmm. she is one of them because she would set up places in near her where she would honor the Last Supper, honor Calvary, uh, honor the, the different stations and she would make them with great love. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the entrance there right. to here, mm -hmm. it's about the same height actually of Calvary. Really? Which is, which is not, it's, Calvary is not this big, huge hill. Right. It's a smaller hill. So I had this image of you go there and you want to walk up to Calvary with Jesus. Well, let's, take, let's head up there now. Now, why is there a QR code here? We have the, this book uh, in both in Spanish and English, Stations of the Cross and the Eucharist. And when you put your phone up here, you can get a link which leads you to the text file. You can choose either Spanish or English. And so a person, all that they need is a smartphone and they have mm -hmm. access to this. And I've read all of your meditations. You use a lot of scripture. You're showing how the Old Testament really is fulfilled in the news. So talk about why you chose those particular passages? Well, I think that there is a whole renewal within, uh, since Pope Benedict called the Synod on the Word of God, mm -hmm. and, and the whole call for all Catholics to have a Bible in a place of honor in their homes mm -hmm. and to encounter the Word of God directly so that the Word of God becomes enfleshed in their humanity. And so uh, this passion for the Word of God deepened with him and and sometimes you you will see the stations of the cross redone because there are certain ones are not actually in scriptures mm -hmm. like veronica's veil right. but for me i said well actually there are scriptures that apply to that like seek my face mm -hmm. when you're coming and driving here do we have the billboard which started yesterday and it says, seek my faith. It. Yeah, seek my faith. I said, I bet Father Jim yes. behind that. <laughs> it, and it comes from yes. Second Chronicles 7.14, which is, if my people uh, seek my face, repent of their sins, I will heal their land. Wow. And so that, that's like a, in, mm. within the, the whole movement of trans ideology, of departure of war, mm -hmm. we need to seek his face, to repent of sin, and to find healing and peace for our land and world. And I would recommend uh, you can find those meditations on your website, mm -hmm. corpusc.com is the website for this, par this parish. 
And you can see all of those meditations there. So you can, they're beautiful meditations. It's a, really apologetic, too, to defend the faith. It is. Well, let's continue walking. You can tell us some more about the Stations of the Cross first. Okay, very good. And each of these stations are an invitation to, to walk with Jesus and to allow Him to, to touch our hearts. And so, the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. And so we see that the, the burden of the cross is something that, that Jesus himself bears. And it is, it is our sins that crucified the Lord. And, and by his wounds we are healed. And so we have this also, Jesús cae por primera vez. Yahvé descargó sobre él la culpa de todos nosotros. And everything we do in bilingual as a sense of, of connection, because really a majority of the people in our parish are Hispanic. Now, do you find you get more passionate when you speak in Spanish than you do in English? Claro que sí. Me, me encanta hablar en la lengua español, porque es una lengua de pasión de vida. De it's, it's awesome. I really do that. Yes. And actually, I've begun preaching more forcefully in English because yes. of the method of thinking and the culture and the mm -hmm. passion for life that I encounter yes. within the Hispanics. Mm -hmm. It's it just, I am so blessed. <laughs> and, and the Hispanics have great passion, great patience with all of my mistakes. And it doesn't matter. So <laughs> all that you have to say is, hola, oh, Father, you speak so perfectly. <laughs> well, let's but, look at this one. Okay. Jesus falls for the third time. Jesus falls for the third time. And the meditation we have here is that... There is the problem of falling back into the same sin mm. and the, the sense of, of really hopelessness that can come. Pope Francis says, the Lord never gets tired of forgiving sins, mm -hmm. but we can get tired of asking for forgiveness. Let us not. And with the hope and the perseverance, there is a forging of the virtue of humility. Every confession we make. Mm. And so the development is secret and hidden for the person who humbly continues with hope. Even though they may not see progress, they are progressing because of that key virtue, humility. It's one time we're making an act of humility, right? When yes. we go to confession, we know we're humbling ourselves, admitting our faults, our sins, but we're bringing them to the Lord with hope. As the blood of Jesus speaks more eloquently than that of Abel, one act of humility speaks more eloquently than all of the other sins. Wow. Well, let's keep moving on here through the Stations of the Cross. And let's look at the one up ahead here of Jesus dying on the cross and give us some reflections on that particular station. To understand the seven last words that Jesus himself spoke, we know that he needed to press upon his feet in the utter agony of raising himself up because the crucifixion is asphyxiating. He wouldn't have breath to speak. And so he had to, every word he spoke was at the price of great pain. And so in this particular meditation, we have the seven words of Christ from the cross, like, behold your mother. Mm -hmm or that Father forgive them, they know not what they do, or it is finished, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And beginning Psalm 22, ending in victory. And so in this time, we always kneel. We do the Stations of the Cross during Lent as a parish. We kneel and we do each of the meditations uh, and listen to his, his voice to help us in our own crosses today. Let's move on now to the stations of the Eucharist that you've connected now after the 14th station where Jesus is laid in the tomb. Now we come to the first Eucharistic station. Talk about why you uh, put them in that order. Melchizedek is the, the earliest time we find in Scripture mm -hmm. in Genesis 14 where we see Abraham has just responded to Lot, his nephew being kidnapped and in captivity. Abraham goes to war, frees him, overcomes the enemies and comes back and the king of Salem the, the, is, presents him with bread and wine. Mm. So there is a sense of victory over captivity 
And it's a beautiful anticipation of when we receive Holy Communion, we receive the forgiveness of all venial sins and the promise of eternal life. It is the medicine of immortality, the antidote to death. Amen. Now, would you encourage people, are they welcome to come here and to make these Stations of the Cross and the Stations of the Eucharist? Yes, and sometimes we've actually had Protestants who would see the three crosses be drawn mm -hmm. and they would see the scripture, 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 and they would have a sense of welcome. And, and one said, you know, I'm not Catholic, but could I do the stations or could I bring my children to the stations? Mm. And they have done that. Wow. And we had one who came and struggling with depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. and they, they felt healed of it. They, they sense a sense of peace um, mm. th through making the way of the Eucharist and cross. Yeah, I know the great uh, Franciscan Leonard of Port Maurice who established the stations in many places. Yes, yes. That he said, if you make the stations, the clouds are going to lift. Beautiful. Because when you when you see the value of our suffering and our Lord's suffering and uniting yours to His, something of His strength is imparted to us. Awesome. You know? Now talk about the Fatima statues that you have here. When I was at the Franciscan University of Steubenville, I was reminded of the story of Fatima, in which the Angel of Peace elevated the host and there was a drop of blood flowing from the host into the chalice. And, and as I was in mass one time, I just had the image very, very strongly presented to me. And, and it just the connection that it, there is the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the host, in the precious blood, in, in the chalice. And then what the angel is teaching the children is, my God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. And I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. And so there is this, this reparation of Eucharistic indifference or diminishment mm -hmm. of the full reality. Right. And, and the, the whole Eucharistic miracles is, is a, a sense of implicitly presented here. Well, thank you for sharing with us the stations of the cross and the stations of the Eucharist. And I really would encourage you to go to corpusc.com where you can download those meditations that you put together. And it's really going to, I think, enrich your own spiritual life as you go with our Lord to the Stations of the Cross and then the Stations of the Eucharist. So thank you, Father Jim. You're welcome. So please like, share, and subscribe. And Father Jim, would you join me in blessing all of those who have taken part in this video? May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We make the sign of the cross the sign of Christ's victory over you.